Hey everyone, on time for another gaming vlog, so uh, riddle me this everyone. What do Temtem, Dragon's Dogma 2, and Overwatch 2 all have in common? There are several topics I'll be addressed, essay in terms of news that's good, bad, and just plain silly in many respects. Next as well as what I'm currently playing, I mean, other developments I've been wanting to address for a bit, so let's get started. First, let's start with something we've been just for a while. It seems that Temtem is going to be putting out its final update, a meaning that no further development of the game will be done. And though the developers have maintained that the game will remain playable and the monetization and and will be removed would I still would argue that on a personal level I would suggest it's data number I mean if anything it shows the perils of trying to compete in this market and in hindsight it probably wasn't the best idea to leave early access the same time in between both Ninja Charles Card 1 Collection and Splatoon 3. He, I'll also note that as of midnight tonight, the in most time zones that the 3DS and Wii U online support will be ceasing as well. So as I have just stated, it just further illustrates like the trials tribulations of the online games of service market. On that note, Overwatch 2 is revamping its battle pass system after this week, which means that they will no longer be paywalling new heroes behind the pass, as in those who have have gotten that method before will be compensated. And this also comes ahead of a larger revamp, albeit with the Clavers environment content being among its casualties in the process. As and it's closer to how it was in the first game, in which, imagine that, going back to what made a first game successful, oh, and no, not a moment too soon, because the Cowboy Bebop event was roundly mocked for how pricey the, its cosmetics were. Not counting, like, the, the iron skin for Wrecking Ball, which is absolutely adorable. That's why he says, like, a thumbnail here. Here, it's been pointing out, it was pointing out that for the price of one, I repeat, one set, that as noted by Deserto, you could get the entire anime on Blu ray, which I would go with, with, with that. I mean, it's a great show. So, it just goes to show how there are many times where trying to beat the buzz of the quote the reports can indeed backfire on someone when it's clearly not ready for release. Case in point, Dragon's Dogma 2. I reiterate as someone who never played the first game and I just understood why people were excited for the sequel and why just as many people were not satisfied with it, at least at launch. Challenge me with some of the more egregious uh, concerns being the fact they not only not only fixed and didn't fix some of the criticisms of the first game, they doubled down on them. Um, the rather esoteric travel and combat systems, especially, he, and also charged people money he, for or a lot of the ways to bypass these these issues, which at their worst actually totaled more combined than the base game, which is always something a deal breaker. Or, I mean, he, it was bad enough when those things were in Devil May Cry 5 and the Resident Evil 4 remake, both games I enjoyed, but this is admittedly ridiculous as is the De Nuvo DRM on the PC version, which, as has been noted, often makes it run worse than cracked copies. I mean, he's I mean, and the initial response only infuriated plays even further. At which time they even put out a second response, which they are planning to 
put in lots of fixes, especially in regards to performance, and, and to revamp the monetization system. So it's another case where they took what would have been an easy win and they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, it seems, where it would if one or two of these factors were involved, it'd be one thing, but all these issues combined when it saw launch was yet another unforced error error in just the first quarter of alone. So now that I've got that mess out of the way, let's talk about what I've been playing in no particular order. I've been really enjoying Splatoon 3. I he I'm still working on the new who bits of weapons and gear, including the Springfest material. And for those in the know, I I guess you might say I'll be on Team Rabbit for the snuggly springtime I'm creatures. And with that in mind, I'm also, oh, as I mentioned, I have been dipping into ones I have been, haven't been played in a while. Apart from Overwatch 2, I mentioned, I'm very close to unlocking Life, Life Weaver. Her, I have also gotten back into Capcom Arcade Stadium. There was a sale on some of the games that you could add to it, as well as its sequel. Oh, I mean... And Star Wars Battlefront 2 Classic... Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. And put out update 1.3. And has fixed a lot of the issues from the launch build. I'm live on PC first. It's currently live on console. I can now verify that... That, yes, outro cutscenes in the campaign are back and I'm also still going for Platinum. I can see myself logging as many hours into this as I did the original version and I play on the PS2 and the OG Xbox so I am definitely thinking that much like other Battlefront titles in recent memory and other parts of Saga no less, that even something that can be engulfed by the dark side can be pulled back to light. And yes, I am seriously considering seeing episode one be released and not just for the Acolyte footage either. So, here you go. In regards to PS Plus footage, I have have not also... Okay, so PS Plus games, I've also managed to who try... I have these selections I have access to on PS4 since so I don't have PS5, so I won't be able to play Mortal Zephyrium. What a shame. Hey, I think that Minecraft Legends is a decent game, even though I understand why not everybody is into it. I mean, compared to other spinoffs like Dungeon, Story Mode, Mode, and other ones of that nature. I mean, I would say that once again, it's another month that the base titles on extra on the essential tier. It's Skull the Hero Slayer here that's been the most interesting, at least on a personal level, in terms of how it approaches his roguelite action gameplay and how different special abilities you can have access to. So definitely planning on playing more of that fairly soon. To wrap this up, I. I thought I would talk about a potential game coming to PS Plus Premium and one that's been confirmed for a couple that have been confirmed for extra this month. I mean, I mean we have Dave the Diver and another one in the few games that's coming as a day and date with like the retail launch on the console and other systems. Tales of Kenzira Zao. I have not been keeping active track of that one, but I want to try it. Same with Day of the Diver. And also, another one they found in the game in their back end is Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 as a vintage PS1 title, which is something that's always appreciated. I mean, especially with May the 4th coming and it follows other lazy titles of the saga. 
uh, being put out at a relatively steady pace. I mean, and I don't know what the output's going to look like with the Toki being interim CEO in light of Jim Ryan's his departure and a, very, a fairly ill-timed PS Stars token as well. Well, and, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Just so you know, I have not just been playing in Doom Eternal and watching One Piece is on 100, though that's also true. Anyway, that'll be all for now. See you all again very soon, so take care everyone.